Want to know how we help keep our water clean? IISD Experimental Lakes Area, or IISD ELA, studies the impacts of human activity on our environment. Only we don't conduct our experiments in a lab. We conduct them on entire ecosystems. IISD ELA is a collection of 58 lakes in northwestern Ontario, Canada, set aside for scientific research. It's the only lab of its kind in the world. Because all life depends on water, we study the impacts of contaminants. Evidence from real-world ecosystem experiments help governments make better decisions and help protect our water and planet. Here are some of the things we research. Synthetic estrogen. Estrogen is a naturally occurring hormone responsible for the regulation of the female reproductive system in humans and animals. Endocrine disrupting compounds, or EDCs, mimic or interfere with hormones such as estrogen. The contraceptive pill, for example, prevents ovulation by introducing synthetic estrogen in the body, tricking the body into thinking that it has already ovulated. Over 100 million women worldwide use the pill, with 6 million in Canada alone. How does it get in our water? Synthetic estrogen used in the pill is called ethyl estradiol, or EE2, and is passed in the urine of those who take the pill, which gets flushed down toilets. EE2 isn't completely removed by wastewater treatment plants, and although it will naturally break down in a couple of weeks, environmental concentrations remain high because of constant discharges into our rivers and lakes. EE2 is present in municipal wastewater and affects fish and aquatic life. Why is it an issue? When humans pollute ecosystems with EDCs, it can have negative health consequences for the reproductive systems of animals and humans. How do we know? Researchers added 126.2 grams of EE2 to a lake at IISD ELA over three years. This amount brought the EE2 in the lake to levels that are similar to what would be measured downstream of wastewater treatment plants in a city of about 240,000 people. Researchers then monitored how aquatic animals and plant populations reacted. What we found. Synthetic estrogen affected all fish species, but especially fathead minnows that live in the shallow waters where EE2 concentrations were the highest. When EE2 enters male fish through the gills, it reaches their liver and acts like natural estrogen, inducing the production of vitellogenin, a protein needed for the development of fish eggs. Since males have no ovaries to uptake vitellogenin, this protein accumulates in the bloodstream. Some male fish exposed to EE2 had 24,000 times more vitellogenin in their bloodstream than normal. The kidneys attempt to remove this excess protein from the blood and may become clogged and fail. EE2 exposure also led to the development of intersex fish, males who were feminized with delayed sperm cell development and eggs in their testes. These problems likely prevented most fathead minnow males from successfully reproducing, leading to a population crash. How does this affect ecosystems? With less fathead minnows, the invertebrates they eat, such as chaobris, zooplankton, rotifers, and benthic macroinvertebrates, increased. The lower minnow population also led to a 25% drop in the population of larger predator fish, like lake trout, as fathead minnows are an important food source for trout. How do governments around the world regulate EE2? Laws can vary by country. The European Union lists EE2 as a priority substance in a directive aimed at protecting water quality. In the United States, EE2 is regulated in water for human consumption, but is not included on the list of quality control standards for lakes and rivers. Canadian laws currently don't include guidelines for EE2. Research at IISD Experimental Lakes Area helps us understand the effects humans have on the environment, enabling us to take meaningful action and make better decisions, keeping our water and ecosystems clean and healthy. To find out more, visit IISD.org ELA.